As you breathe in, breathe out, think of the breath as being medicine for the body. Wherever the body feels raw or exposed or wounded, think of the breath energy soothing it. Wherever the energy is tight, think of it relaxing. Where it feels scattered, think of it gathering together. Remember that the Buddha described himself as a doctor, and he's training us to be doctors for ourselves. Through the way we speak, the way we act, the way we think. All of these things can be medicine for us. Act in a harmless way. Okay, you're going to benefit. Speak in a harmless way. Think in a harmless way. It's going to be healthy for the body and for the mind. And as with any good doctor, you're going to need a, the ability to read yourself to see what is out of balance. And you also need the ability to know that there are lots of different medicines. Like when we meditate, the breath is our basic tonic. But sometimes the basic tonic is not enough. In Thailand, the old-fashioned doctors would have what they called their big pot of medicine, which would be the basic tonic that we, they would give. And then depending on different diseases you've got, they'd add this ingredient or that ingredient to the basic tonic. This is why sometimes we have contemplation of the body, sometimes development of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity. Contemplation of death when we're getting lazy. Contemplation of the triple gem when you need some encouragement. So remember that as a good doctor you have to have a wide range of medicines and know how to read the condition of your mind and figure out which medicine you need. Because as we live in this world, it's not so much the things outside that are scarring the mind or wounding the mind. It's things that come up from within the mind itself. So you have to be especially careful to find the medicines that can counteract greed, aversion, and delusion, and all the other unskillful qualities that come up. Because when they come up, they harm not only you, but they harm the people around you. And it comes back at you. You're creating your environment by the way you act, by the way you speak, by the way you think. So you have to look at how you're sending energy out into the environment, what you're contributing to the environment. Because a lot of the pollution in our environment is not the industrial pollution. It's the pollution of our words, the pollution of our thoughts. So be very careful about what kind of environment you're creating. And do some human-caused climate change in the right direction. Creating a pure environment around you, a healthy environment around you. By creating the good conditions for health inside.